When people think about farming, they usually imagine tractors, soil, and sunlight. But in China, it's a very different and weird world. Here you'll find cockroach farms, gardens floating in the air, and sky-reaching buildings filled with pigs. Well, it sounds bizarre, but these methods aren't just eccentric. They're shockingly effective, rooted in ancient wisdom, and in some cases, saving our planet. From mushrooms sprouting from logs to ducks doing pest control, these are the 15 China's most unusual farming techniques you won't find anywhere else on this holy earth. Number 15. Veggies on the water. Soil wasn't working, so Chinese farmers did what the rest of the world couldn't. They grew veggies on water. In flood-prone zones where fields get soaked and stay useless, they started building floating gardens instead. The setup's simple. All you need are bamboo frames, recycled bottles, straw, and compost. Then they plant seeds right on top. Lettuce, herbs, and greens thrive while drifting on still water. That's because no soil, no problem. The compost feeds the roots, and the water underneath keeps everything moist. It's not fancy. It's just smart. These platforms work in flood season, save space, and don't erode land. Below the rafts, fish swim freely, creating a layered working ecosystem. It's farming that adapts, not waits. And for your info, it's not decorative. These floating farms produce real crops, with lower risk and lower costs. When the land fails, it keeps growing. And yes, Chinese people also grow weird fruits. You see you YouTube. Number 14. China's Roach Hustle Now this one's not for the squeamish, but cockroach farming in China is big business. The same creepy crawlies you'd panic over in your kitchen, now they're being raised by the billions in full-blown industrial setups. One farm in Shandong alone breeds 6 billion cockroaches a year. Well guys, that's not a typo. And even, it's not for shock value. These bugs are being used in medicine and cosmetics. Roach-based syrups are actually helping treat ulcers and respiratory issues in hospitals. In skincare, roach extract is popping up in anti-aging creams. People are literally glowing off bug juice. And the wildest part is that these farms are high-tech. Artificial intelligence controls everything. Temperature, food, humidity. It's a luxury roach life, managed better than most apartments. As gross as it sounds, it's efficient, cheap, and surprisingly sustainable. They breed fast, eat leftovers, and practically raise themselves. It might make your skin crawl, but China's figured out how to cash in on one of the planet's most hated pests. Number 13. Lettuce on the Roof Urban farming is getting a serious upgrade in China, with fresh produce now thriving on rooftops across big cities. As farmland shrinks and land prices skyrocket, rooftops have stepped in as the next frontier for food production. Instead of wasting valuable rooftop space, buildings now host rows of lettuce, herbs, tomatoes, and even melons soaking up sunlight. But this isn't some trendy gimmick. It's efficient, smart urban design. Rooftop farms help cool overheated cities and reduce food transport drastically. And this movement isn't primitive. These sky gardens use drip irrigation to save water, sensors to track soil conditions, and solar panels to power the whole setup. Some rooftops even double as energy hubs, proving buildings can multitask. Necessity is fueling this shift. With rural farmland disappearing, Chinese folks are reclaiming every inch. Rooftop farming is practical, tech-savvy, and sustainable, changing how cities eat, live, and grow. Number 12. Bugs Fighting Bugs Chinese farmers don't use pesticides or spraying. They just rely on nature and a lot of bugs. Integrated pest control in China is all about using one bug to take out another. Farmers release ladybugs, parasitic wasps, and even insect-killing fungi into their fields. Now these aren't simply random releases. They track pest numbers, time the intervention, and let the right insects strike at the right moment. Here, nothing gets wasted. It's all measured. 
Researchers are backing this hard by breeding helpful insects, designing pest-attracting trap crops, and setting up field systems that respond to real threats. The payoff is clear. Crops grow cleaner, soil stays healthier, and people eat food without chemical leftovers. Instead of dumping dangerous toxins, they're letting predators do the job. It's tactical, efficient, and better for the planet. Bugs fighting bugs? Well, we know. It isn't cute, but it's effective, tested, and way smarter than poison on a menu. Number 11. Scorpion Farming Well, scorpions are scary. I mean, they look like they belong in a nightmare, not a farm. But in China, they're being raised by the thousands. Inside climate-controlled facilities, jet-black scorpions crawl across stacked trays like something out of a lab. But this is all business. Their venom contains powerful compounds now being studied for pain relief and inflammation treatment. Dried scorpions are also used in traditional Chinese medicine, ground into powders or steeped into medicinal tonics. These operations aren't small or makeshift. Every factor, like light, temperature, humidity, and feeding, is monitored and managed. Most people avoid one scorpion. These farmers work with thousands. It's risky, but the demand is real. With more studies exploring venom-based treatments, this odd industry is expanding fast. There's debate around ethics and handling, but the market keeps growing. The scorpion farm isn't a gimmick. It's a serious blend of biotech and traditional healing, and it's only becoming more profitable with time. Number 10. Shrooms on a log. Logs, not labs, are the quiet power behind this mushroom-growing method. With the right setup, fungi thrive naturally. You don't need gadgets, just time and knowledge. Now, here's how it really works. Farmers use hardwood logs, usually oak or beech, and drill small holes into them. Then they insert mushroom spawn, basically mushroom seeds, seal it with wax, and leave it alone. That's it. The logs sit in a cool, shady area, slowly soaking up moisture like a sponge. A few months later, mushrooms start sprouting like nature's own snack machine. Shiitake is the star here, but other edible mushrooms are catching up. The best part is these, these logs keep producing for years. It's like a long-term side gig that needs no machines, chemicals, or bags, just wood, spores, and patience. This unique method has been used in China for centuries. It's straightforward, clean, and quietly genius. What do you think about it? Will you try this method? Number 9. Sky High Bacon Factory now this is weird. In Hubei province, there's a pig farm inside a skyscraper. 26 floors of livestock are automated, contained, and engineered for mass production. Over a million pigs move through it every single year. Every process is mechanized, from feeding to waste removal. They don't need open fields or barns. Just a full industrial setup stacked vertically. The reason is very simple. Land is running out, and demand keeps rising. Vertical farming isn't just for plants anymore. In this model, disease is easier to manage, operations stay cleaner, and efficiency climbs. It saves space, boosts output, and centralizes every step of production. But not everyone's sold. Some question how natural it is for pigs to live in towers. Concerns about animal welfare, stress levels, and confinement aren't small. Still, the system keeps growing. While traditional farms sprawl outward, this one builds upward. Whether it's the future or a phase, we say just one thing. Raising livestock in vertical factories is no longer hypothetical. Number 8. Veggies in the Sand Growing crops in desert sand sounds impossible, but China's already doing it. They don't need fertile soil or green pastures. All they need is sand, nutrients, and a method that works. Farmers create sand pits by blending dry desert sand with a balanced nutrient solution. Sand drains fast, which avoids waterlogging and keeps roots stable. The result is precise, controlled hydration that lets plants thrive. Lettuce, tomatoes, and beans are now growing where almost nothing used to survive. 
This isn't just a cool experiment, it's fixing real-world problems. China is using this method to reclaim desert areas and reduce the pressure on overused farmland. Sand Ponix uses less water than traditional farming, avoids erosion, and skips chemical runoff entirely. The sand is already there, cheap and abundant. All it needs is direction. With rising heat and shrinking farmland, this approach is becoming a serious solution. But is it good to make deserts green? Saudi Arabia is also planning to plant 10 billion trees in the deserts. Number 7. Veggies in the Sky Well, it sounds total rubbish, but China's taking farming to the sky, with crops climbing higher than most apartments. One vertical farm in the country operates without a single worker inside. 14 stories of lettuce, fully automated. Here, robots handle everything, planting, watering, lighting, and harvesting without soil or sunlight. Artificial lighting simulates daylight, while climate control keeps conditions perfect. Sensors watch over every tray, and AI adjusts every variable. Urban land is scarce, but vertical farms use airspace, not acreage. That's the shift. The tower runs year-round with consistent yields without running low. By growing where people live, it cuts food transport and boosts freshness. This is farming built for dense cities, not the countryside. It's engineered, not planted. The system uses less water, no pesticides, and takes up a fraction of the footprint. While others expand outward, this farm moves upward, and it's working fine. Number 6. Tea in the Trees In Yunnan, farmers don't clear forests to grow tea, they use the forest itself. The tea plants grow beneath tall native trees, shaded by the canopy and protected by the ecosystem above. The process is slow but intentional. Shade slows growth, but improves flavor. The soil stays rich, pests stay under control, and biodiversity stays intact. The balance of plants, insects, and trees creates a natural farming environment that produces premium tea without harming the land. This traditional system has existed for centuries and still thrives today. The FAO has even recognized it as a globally important agricultural heritage system. Farmers don't just harvest tea, they maintain forests, preserve the soil, and keep the land stable while doing it. It's a long-term method rooted in sustainability, not short-term gains. Growing tea in the trees isn't just about quality, it's about protecting what surrounds it, and Chinese people know how to do it. Number 5. Rice on the Edge Terrace rice farming turns mountain cliffs into living stairways of green. By carving horizontal steps into steep slopes, farmers create flat beds that gently guide water from one level to the next. It's the perfect setup for rice in rugged terrain. In Yunnan, the Hani people have worked this method for over 1,300 years. Their terraces stretch up the hills like nature's architecture, smart, efficient, and stunning. Spring water from the forests flows through every layer, creating a gravity-fed irrigation system that needs zero machines. But this isn't just about rice. The terraces form a full ecosystem. Forests up top catch the rain, villages rest in the middle, and paddies cover the base. Every layer feeds the next. It holds soil, keeps water clean, and keeps everything in check. Every step is built and repaired by hand. UNESCO didn't miss it either. They named it a World Heritage Site, honoring this blend of farming, culture, and flat-out genius. Number 4. Fishing, Feeding, and Flossing The integrated Mulberry Dyke Fish Pond System isn't just a long name. It's a clever way to make farming, fishing, and silk production work in sync. Here's how it flows. Ponds are bordered by dikes planted with mulberry trees. Those leaves feed silkworms, and their waste, along with leftover leaves, gets composted and fed into the pond, enriching it with algae and plankton. That becomes food for the fish. No waste, no chemicals, just a self-recycling loop that's been running in the Pearl River Delta for over a thousand years. It's efficient, zero-input farming where every element feeds the next. The mulberry fuels silk, 
the silk waste feeds the fish, and the fish nourishes the community. The soil stays healthy, the water stays clean, and the entire setup runs without synthetic fertilizers. It's smart, it's sustainable, and it supports both food and trade. Ancient by design, modern in value. This system isn't just surviving, it's still thriving. Number 3. Bamboo Water Hack now bamboo pipes sound too basic for you and me, but they are practical. Chinese farmers cut long bamboo stalks, connect them end to end, and let gravity do the rest. Water flows from a stream through this natural piping, dripping directly onto crops without motors, machines, and bills. It's been working for over 200 years, especially in steep regions where modern irrigation breaks down fast. Bamboo doesn't snap. It bends, holds, and flows. These systems are cheap to set up, run quietly, and hydrate entire farms with a fraction of the water others waste. One well-built bamboo line can irrigate up to 25 fields. During dry spells, this method survives when high-tech gear fails. It's not flashy, it's practical, and the beauty is in how little it asks for. Just a blade, a few good cuts, and patience. While others overcomplicate, Chinese farmers stick to what works. Number 2. Dirt that works over time. In China, you'll find farms planting crops they'll never harvest, and it's not because they got bored, but they did it on purpose. These are green manure crops, and they're transforming how soil is treated. Plants like clover, alfalfa, and hairy vetch are grown specifically to be cut down and buried before maturity. They don't end up on plates, they go straight back into the soil. The result? Richer nutrients, better soil structure, moisture retention, and fewer weeds, all without synthetic fertilizers. These crops also pull nitrogen from the air and fix it into the ground, feeding whatever gets planted next. For land exhausted by chemical overuse, this method offers a clean reset. More farmers are turning to it to rebuild soil health and protect long-term yields. It's affordable, natural, and scientifically backed. Green manure doesn't just feed the field, it prepares it to keep producing. Farming doesn't pause after harvest, it continues underground. That's what keeps the land alive. And that's how China's farmers are protecting their future. Number 1. Duck, Fish, and Rice Squad well, it sounds like a joke, but it's real and kind of brilliant. The rice fish duck system combines three completely different species into one self-sustaining farming method. It starts with a rice patty, then they add fish, and lastly, throw in some ducks. That's the formula. The ducks aren't just for show, they devour pests like snails and bugs. They are a natural pest control. Their poop is a pure fertilizer. The fish keep the water clean by feeding on algae and weeds while also fertilizing the rice through their own waste. Every part supports the others. It's an ecosystem that runs itself. And the rice grows stronger, with better yields and no pollution. Scientists say this system even helps reduce climate change. Nature's own collaboration. And it works. Here's the twist. This method isn't new. Farmers in southern China have used it for over 1,200 years, long before anyone talked about sustainable farming. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It helps us a lot. Thanks for hanging with us, and we'll see you soon.